Hello students and welcome to a lesson in science 2 where we will learn about agro-complementary occupations. Agro-complementary means related to agriculture. And in this video we will be studying about animal husbandry, sericulture and poultry farming. We begin with animal husbandry. Animal husbandry is the practice used to increase the production of animal products. Animal husbandry includes the feeding, breeding that is reproduction and disease control of livestock animals. If you can see in the pictures here how clean and neatly they are kept. And so they, there is less chance of them getting any disease. Local Indian varieties of cows like Sahiwal, Sindhi, Gir, Kilari, Dangi, etc. And exotic varieties that is from abroad, not from India, like Jersey, Brown Swiss, Holstein, etc. are kept for their milk. And proper care is necessary for clean and high yield of milk. These are our Indian varieties of cows. And this, the Jersey, Brown Swiss, Holstein are the foreign breed of cow. Now in India, animal husbandry is practiced for milk production as well as, as using cattle to help in farming operations. Now you see cows and buffaloes are mainly raised for milk. Whereas bulls and male buffaloes are used for pulling heavy loads in, the, in farming. Now, if they are going to give us milk and if they are going to help in, in the farm in heavy duties, then care should be taken of the cattle. Okay, A balanced diet that is which includes all the constituents of food should be given to this cattle and it must include fiber rich, coarse, rough food, fodder and sufficient water. The cattle shed, the place where the cattle are kept, should be clean, it should be dry, with proper light, ventilation and a nice roof. Shouldn't be kept open for rain and anything to come in. Thirdly, the cattle should be regularly vaccinated because if one gets a, some disease, everyone will be getting it because they stay so close to one another. Next, we come to poultry farming. Rearing of egg and meat yielding chickens is called poultry farming. The objectives behind the development of new hybrid varieties from a cross between Indian varieties like Asil and exotic varieties like Leghorn are as follows. So, what is this poultry farming? Is rearing of chickens for their egg and meat. And so, what we do? We make new hybrid varieties between the Indian and the foreign chickens. Okay, And the reason is because to produce good quality chickens in large numbers. Secondly, to develop the ability to withstand high temperature. And third, to use byproducts of agriculture as poultry feed etc. Okay. So, these are the reasons why poultry farming is done, hybridization is done. Now, the chickens are divided into two, that is the layers and the broilers. Chickens raised for eggs are called the layers, like the leghorn, minorca, ancona, lemon, etc. Now, the chickens which are raised for meat purposes, to sell them, no? so the chicken we make in the house, those are that is for meat. They are called broilers, and some of the examples are Brahma, Long, Cochin, and Asil. Now, Rhode Island Red, New Hampshire, Plymouth Rock, Black Rock are varieties of chicken who are raised for both eggs as well as for meat. They are not layers or broilers. They are raised for both. 
their eggs as well as for meat. Now, this is a very, very good poultry farm. Some of the poultry farm just keep their chickens anyway. They just let them go. If they get food or they don't get food, they are not concerned. But see here how well they are kept. There is enough space. It's all segregated. Their food comes here in this trough. And when they lay eggs, the eggs come out to be collected later on. So this is an ideal poultry farm. Next, we have the third agro-complementary occupation called sericulture or silk farming. And this is cultivation of silkworms to produce silk. Now, these silkworms are reared for production of silk. Bombyx mori is the most commonly used worm. Okay? And this is how it looks. The life cycle of the silk moth consists of four stages. Those are egg, larva, pupa and adult. So you know what eggs are. Then they form larva. Okay. Then there is a stage called pupa and finally the adult butterfly. Now, thousands of eggs laid by female moths are incubated artificially to shorten the incubation period. Lava hatching out of the eggs are released on mulberry plants. These lava are nourished by feeding on the leaves of the mulberry plant. After feeding for 3 or 4 days, they move on to the branches of the mulberry plant. So, first of all, thousands of eggs are laid by the female moth. They are incubated, they are kept, you know, at a certain temperature artificially so that, you know, they, they hatch faster. Okay. Now, these are lay, kept on mulberry plants and then from when they eat, after eating the leaves, after 3-4 days, you will find these same silkworms moving to the branches of the mulberry plant. The silk thread is formed from the secretion of their salivary glands. So, from their saliva or spit, the glands, this silk thread comes out. These larvae, that is in a worm form, they spin these threads around themselves to form a cocoon. And the cocoon may be spherical in shape, see. They start releasing something from the salivary glands and they start making a, a thing around themselves which is called a cocoon. And the cocoon may look like this, round in shape, spherical. 10 days before the pupa now turns into an adult moth, all the cocoons are transferred into boiling water. And here that pupa which is there inside the cocoon dies. And because of the boiling water now, the silk fibers which the cocoon is made up, up of, they become loose. These fibers are unwound, nicely taken out. They are processed, put on reels. Various kinds of fabric that is cloth is woven now from these silk threads. See here, this is already put in uh, hot water. The moth or the pupa is dead in between. The silk fibers start becoming loose. Okay, they start, you know, coming out. Yeah, and then we have, you know, the fiber and the silk thread. And then from here we make silk cloth. So, these are the pupa within the cocoon. You see here, making the cocoon round itself and you can see the silk thread all around it. Yeah. So, very interesting agro, uh, agro complementary occupation. Let's revise. Fill in the blanks. Dash and dash are reared for milk. Silk thread is formed by the secretion of dash glands. The aseal chicken is raised for dash. Then we have matched the columns. And one question, how should cattle be taken care of? I'm sure you will be able to you know, explain and uh, answer all these 